Uh, hello, uh, my name is Jerry Benderstiff. I am the director of research here at uh, Little Street Pottery. Uh, about uh, several months ago, uh, um, Anne challenged us. Figure it out, Jerry. To um, replicate uh, a mug that she saw in a video on YouTube. Uh, no doubt you have probably seen this too. It's by Old Forge Ceramics, and uh, they made this pebble mug. And uh, while well, my team has been working on this now for uh, several months, and uh, we've watched the video uh, 134 times, and uh, we have replicated everything exactly as they had in the experiment. Clearly, these people at Old Forge are just not potters, but um, uh, probably uh, Illuminati, or at least engaged in some sort of dark art uh, or black magic. Uh, in any case, uh, here is our attempt at making the, the pebble mug. And so I sat down with Jerry to discuss how to replicate the mysterious pebble mug. Here he's using that rock from the mines of Madrogi in England. We need that rock, Jerry. We examined every frame of the video and noted important details about the process. He has a very clean studio. Not anywhere near clean as John the Potter's, though. That place is immaculate. After I threatened Jerry's job, his confidence seemed to grow and he even added a twist to the project. All right, Jerry, that's a big challenge. Yes. Well, we're going to attempt to get that same finish inside and outside on our cups or bowls or whatever this is. So I sent Jerry to England where he brought back one of the magical pebbling stones from the mines of Madrobi. Our first attempt at pebbling was on a freshly thrown bowl. I tried twisting the rock first, but quickly found the lack of friction just tore into the clay. Rocking the pebble back and forth worked better. I also found that freshly thrown clay was too soft. The walls would not hold their shape when pushed against it. And because the walls were pushed in, the pebble indentations were not as crisp as I had hoped. Clearly I needed the clay to stiffen up. The second attempt was to pebble when the clay was a very stiff leather hard. This took a bit more effort, but the indentations were much more defined on the outside. The problem was that when I looked inside the bowl, the clay projections had cracked on the ends. I was able to wet my fingers and rub the cracks away, but I was still unsure if they would open up again in the final firing. Back to the drawing board, I finally figured out that I needed to pebble the mug just as the clay was setting up, but not quite leather hard. The clay was easier to pebble, the indentations were nice and crisp, and there was no cracking on the inside. Always trying for perfection, Jerry designed the Pebble Pal 3000 in order to create uniformly round indentations. I'm very impressed. It worked really well. Great job, Jerry. The next step was to let the pieces dry until they were leather hard and then trim and burnish them. The handles were then scored, slipped, and attached to the mugs. I then set all the pieces aside to dry completely, and then I bisque fired them to cone 04. In the meantime, I didn't have the glazes available that he used, so I needed to make them. The video said they used Heath A2V Ivory and Floating Blue. Luckily, I had all the ingredients. If you'd like to try this, we've put the links below to the recipes that we used. One other thing, before dipping into the powdered materials, remember, safety first, wear your respirator. I created a 3,000 gram batch of the Heath Ivory so that I could dip the pieces. I knew I'd be pouring the floating blue and I wouldn't need as much of that glaze, so I just made a 300 gram batch of that one. Time to start glazing. According to the video, he waxed the bottom of the mug and about a half inch onto the sides of the mug too. So under the watchful eye of Clint Eastwood, I marked this out and spread a thin layer of wax resist to the area. 
The first glaze to go on was the Heath Ivory Glaze. I mixed it all up really well and then dipped the cup by rolling it down into the glaze, releasing a little bit of the trapped air from the center, like the old forge guy. On the inside of the mug, the glaze had coated about an inch down from the rim, but it also splashed a little bit along the wall. Jerry insisted that I sponge off the splashed glaze so that it was a nice, clean, straight line. On the second piece, we decided to forego the rolling and the releasing of the air. I just dunked it straight down into the glaze up to the wax resist line. I counted to three and brought it straight out. Not bad. It did have a slight burp line, but I just sponged it off. Jerry had an idea to reverse the technique so that the pebble result showed up on the outside of the mug. Since the glaze was runny, I thought a goblet with a tall, unglazed base would work better. In this case, I poured the ivory glaze on the inside, and then I brushed on more ivory glaze to the upper edge on the outside. The next step was to clean up the inside of the mug so I could pour the floating blue. Mr. Old Forge didn't specify how much glaze to pour inside the mug, but I do know that his glaze needs to be thick for the glaze to fire out blue. I followed the video and kept swirling the glaze around until it soaked into the walls of the pieces. The goblet was trickier. I didn't make enough floating blue glaze to dip it, so I decided to pour that glaze instead. As you can see, I accidentally let the glaze go inside the piece. Well, perhaps it'll add an area of interest to the inside. I fire my kiln loads to cone five, but I wasn't sure if these glazes would work well at that temperature. Just in case, I decided to brush two of the pieces with a bit of another glaze called Strontium Crystal Magic. This particular glaze acts as a glaze modifier when brushed over a base glaze. It can really brighten the color and produce a variegated appearance. When the glaze was all dry, I put them into the kiln and fired them to cone five. not a total disaster. This cup came out kind of cool. It's the one I used the strontium crystal magic on. Uh, perhaps it was helpful in fighting the dark arts. Now this bowl I was happy with. If you look really close, it still has a bit of an eerie quality. We did get some nice pebbling on this bowl, but Jerry got mad and broke it after I fired him. Our goblet experiment came out neat, but we didn't get the peppling effect that we had hoped for. Here are the takeaways we learned from this experiment. First, leave enough ivory glaze along the inside of the rim so it'll run down the mug and create the peacock effect. Second, after you've glazed the pots, wait 24 hours for it all to dry or else the glaze will jump off the pots. Third, Floating blue needs to be applied thickly for the blue to appear once fired. Finally, Mines of Madrovia, overrated. If you like our video, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time in the studio.